Hi, I'm Adam. This is Kevin. And we are Tech Guys Who Invest. This is the place for business people and investors to learn all about investing. We offer a fresh perspective on what it's like to have a day job while investing. And we share lessons learned on our investing journey. Our vision is to educate and entertain you while adding tons of value to your daily commute. Welcome to our show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Tech Guys Who Invest, where we teach you to invest wisely and safely. Today is a two part is part two of a two part series that we're doing on how to find deals. And today's episode is how to find deals for an active investor. If you want to listen to how to find deals for a passive investor, check out part one. But today we're going to cover um, how a active investor in real estate can find deals. So I think we'll start off with explaining what do we mean by deals, which we did for the passive investor part as well. But when we're talking about an active investor looking for deals, uh, you know, we're really talking about an opportunity to invest in real estate for you. And as an active investor, you are going to be the one who finds, manages, and eventually exits this deal. So Kevin, what do you think? Well, I think it really depends on, uh, oh, actually, let's take a step back. As the active investor, I wanted to define that as well. The active investor is the one you're doing the due diligence on a deal. You may be raising capital. You, you may be talking to the vendors who are important to that deal. Let's say if you're multifamily, you know, the property managers, the brokers, if you're a note investor, the note sellers, the servicers, you are doing all of those things, which distinguishes you from the passive investor who's kind of like, oh, I found an active investor to work with and my money goes to work, right? You are the one in the trenches, if you will, doing all of those activities. Uh, as far as deals go, it really depends on, I would say, well, to an extent, it depends on your investor identity. What I mean by that is there are a lot of deals that are done by relationships. Relationships are hugely important. So then going back to that, where do you find these people to build relationships with? Going to events Excellent. like conference, conferences. Sorry, go ahead, Adam. No, sorry. I, I was just agreeing with you vigorously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like exactly. <laughs> so from conferences to uh, meetups, webinar, even webinars, if you attend a webinar, reach out to that host or reach out to the people who are attending the webinar because chances are it's being done. Uh, it's be, the webinar is being hosted via Zoom, right? Those are great ways to do that. LinkedIn, uh, social media. Generally speaking, other investors have opportunities too. One thing I've learned is investors love to buy and sell things. If the price is right, if you will, or if their motivation is, is right, there's another opportunity that they need to go pursue. Whatever the case may be, connect with investors. Investors will always let you know that they're investors. If you're an active investor, I am 100% certain that you're letting other people know you're an investor too, right? Like that's just the, the norm that we do. We take pride in it, but it's also a way for us to raise capital. Uh, we need to let people know that what we're doing uh, is different than this person, all right? It's how we stand out. Uh, so that being said, you can find investors easily by searching them on social media, searching them on Google. So just look out for that. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. I, I love what you're saying there. And it, if you don't know this already and you're an active investor, it, you should be telling every person you meet what you do in terms of your investing, right? I, I remember listening to a podcast early on when I was first starting to get into real estate investing. And he said, I would go up and sit on a bus bench and start talking to someone waiting for the bus and tell them I invest in real estate. The, it was a guest on some podcast I was listening to. And I just thought that was, that was interesting. That sort of stuck with me. And his whole point was, it, if someone sits still long enough, let them know what you do. Well, that can absolutely lead to deals. I know I have been involved in deals before because of a random conversation that came up where I did share what I'm doing with them and it led to something. So that's huge. Uh, one that, that stands out to me, uh, especially on the uh, commercial or you know multifamily investing side is establishing relationships with brokers and agents. And it's funny because when I was focused more on single family investing, I, I was told by some people to avoid 
real estate agents because they don't know how to work with investors. But, but I've since discovered that that's not exactly the best advice. Uh, the key there is to just work with an agent that understands investors. You want to work with an agent who is themselves an investor. If they occasionally will pick up a property, they find uh, but they're a real estate agent for their job. That's a good one to work with. And so you want to talk to them and make sure that they really understand and they actually invest themselves. Uh, and that'll make all the difference in the world. But if you're on the commercial side, like if you're investing in large multifamily apartment buildings and things like that, or if you're investing in um, shopping centers or office space, or if you're investing in something like that, uh, Really, the primary way to get deals is through brokers. Now, what's interesting and, and a little bit difficult about that when you're first getting started is you have to get those relationships built and you have to get them started and they don't want to talk to an unproven new investor because their time is precious and they really need someone who's going to be able to get the deal all the way to close. But as you get through more and more deals as your experience builds and people start to know who you are, that becomes less of an issue. Establishing relationships with brokers is critical for that kind of investing. Nice. And that makes sense from the commercial side. So from a note perspective, there are four ways that you can get notes. The first is going to be through exchanges and marketplaces that you see online. Paper stack is one example. We don't have an affiliation or you know an incentive with them, but that's just one. You could look them up and see that there's a marketplace for notes. That's relatively uh, new from what I've been told. Uh, another place is institutional notes. So if you're buying from a bank, a local credit union, chances are you're not going to be able to buy from a Wells Fargo because they'll probably tell you to pound sand. That, you know, they do deals in the billions, right? That's just not what they do. But you can uh, get pick an area that you like as far as a geography and build a relationship with the local credit union. They may have a note or notes that are like, hey, we can't, we, there's nothing we can do with this or it's not performing, we want to get rid of it. That could be your opportunity to solve their problem and then get added to that investor list. Uh, the third way is through other investors. As I mentioned, investors are always buying and selling things. It's just, I don't know, it's like, it's like a law of physics, if you will. It just always happens. Uh, and then notes can also be found through public record. So seller financing are viable options for note investors, uh, whether they're performing or, or, or non-performing. And you can find that information through, through public records. And when you have those uh, addresses, you can send them direct mail or you can skip trace and get their phone number. All of those are viable things. Um, the direct mail route, that's what I'm doing right now in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm sending direct mails out to people who have seller finance notes. I'm trying to get in touch with the lender and, and buy those notes off of them. So those are four ways that you can find uh, notes. And when it comes to uh, off market, for example, you want to be top of mind, like Adam was saying. You want to be that person that you have the relationship with to say, oh, I know exactly what Kevin's looking for. This will actually be perfect for him. Let me reach out to him first. Right, that comes with building those relationships. Yeah, it's going to take time to find these deals. And I imagine for other asset classes, the same thing is going to hold true. Uh, building those relationships with the right key people. So as an active investor, you're going to have to find out who are these key players? Who are the people that you need in your circle uh, to, to get these deals? And then once you figure out who they are, building the relationship, find a way to add value. That is the simplest way to get on top, to be top of mind of somebody is what ways can you add value? It may be sending them a quick article. It may be, um, you know, things die down, taking them to coffee or whatever the case may be. Yeah, do you add value to them? They will remember you. So I would uh, really focus on building those relationships because they are going to come in handy. So you mentioned direct mail. There are different types of direct mail, yellow letters, postcards, uh, uh other types, I'm sure, uh, there's been direct mail with real estate investing for as, as long as I can remember. Although, you know, I may not have been in this as long as some veterans, the, the books of theirs I've read all mention things like that. So I think direct mail has been around for a long time. And even with technology where it is, it's still effective. It's still happening. So that's a really good one. Online postings, I feel like are kind of a, a more modern version of that. Right. Uh, so you wouldn't want to use one instead of the other. You would want to stack one on top of the other. So in addition to the, the direct mail, 
start posting in the Craigslist group or other types of online websites like that for your area. Also joining a Facebook group for uh, investors in your area might be a good way to find deals. And then we talked about this in the, in the um, part one, but getting on lists can also be a way to find good deals. However, when you're actively investing, when you get on lists for active investments, uh, it's a little different animal there. So a lot of times you may be getting on some, some type of a wholesalers list, especially if you're looking at the single family and, and plexes and things like that. Uh, it's really important to, to understand that they're a reputable player. Uh, there are so many people out there who are not, or they're just trying to get into the game and they're new and, and they've had some bad advice from a, a questionable character who's already in it. And, and there's just a lot of that going on, what we call daisy chainers or, you know, people who are kind of trying to sell other people's deals in a way, try to weed that out as best you can. And uh, one way to do that, you know, is to, is to talk to them and, and begin to establish a bit of a relationship with the person whose list you're going to be on and make sure you're not just getting spam because that can waste your time very quickly. You don't want that, those crappy deals. I don't know a better way to say that one. <laughs> Ask the person <laughs> straight up that's selling it. Are you wholesaling it? Or do you, do you own this? Are you brokering this deal? Those, those are fair questions to ask. If they dodge a question, it might give you the answer, right? But there's nothing wrong with asking that. And that's not to say that wholesalers are, are bad. It, it, if the numbers work for you, then and why not do the deal, right? That's what it boils down to is do the numbers make sense if you're buying it through this person? If it, if it does, then, then why not? It's very possible. You may have to be a better, you have to, you may have to negotiate harder, but it's still a viable option. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk quickly about some ways that apply specifically to commercial. Uh, some of these slightly overlap with what Kevin was saying about notes, but um, building relationships is also critical here. I mean, that's critical everywhere, I think. But building relationships with those who are actually in the industry is a way to do it. So property managers, lenders, SEC attorneys, those are all good examples. Uh, building relationships with other operators and then uh, we already mentioned brokers. So um, that's another good way. And um, if you guys. No, sorry. So we're going to have to cut out some of that because it was like breaking up. But can you just go over what that last thing that you said? Oh, shoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Here goes. And some ways that apply specifically to commercial are going to be, as Kevin said, build relationships. Uh Build relationships with those in the industry. So property managers, lenders, SEC attorneys, those are all good examples of people you could build relationships with and potentially find a good uh, large multifamily deal. Uh, build relationships with other operators. So if you're syndicating mobile home parks, uh, get to know other people in that field and um, it, it can lead to deals one way or the other. Something that doesn't work for one group may work for another. And there are lots of reasons why that could be the case. Uh, and then brokers, again, we mentioned that already, but um, building relationships with brokers who sell the types of properties that you're interested in. Those are all good ways to invest. Love it. Got nothing more to add. Oh, one thing to, to final thing to say is if you have an investor that that's got a good deal flow uh, and you ask them, Hey, where do you find your deals? Don't be offended that they won't tell you. Cause if they give you their source, it basically adds competition to what they're getting access to. So just throwing that out there, that's a pretty normal thing. And you look at it from their position, right? Those deals are going to be their livelihood. So if they're, if they, they're risking um, their livelihood of not being able to, you know, introducing you to this new, this new uh, pipeline, if you will, that may not bode well for them. So just take that, you know, don't get offended if somebody's not really transparent about where they're getting their deals. They're keeping it close to the vest. But we gave you some great tips as to where to find it. It may take some time, so be patient with it, but be consistent. 
be consistent with how you build these relationships, how you're reaching out be on t- to get on top of mind. If you reach out once every nine months, that person's going to forget about you. That's just kind of how we are as, as humans. So do what you can to be uh, top of mind and build those relationships and add value. If you want to share with us how you find your deals as an active investor, we'd love to hear about it. And uh, maybe we could do a podcast episode about it as well. So shoot us an email, techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody. What's up, TGWI Insiders? We'd like to talk to you about our big goal for 2021 that we're determined to hit, but we need your help to do it. Our goal is to get 250 positive comments and reviews on Apple Podcast. You can help us in less than one minute, even as you're listening to this podcast episode. On your phone or computer, you can do this in three simple steps. First, search for us on your Apple Podcast app. Second, navigate to our podcast page by clicking our logo. And finally, scroll to the very bottom where it says leave a review to leave us a five-star review and a positive comment. You can also get these step-by-step instructions by going to tgwipodcast.com forward slash review. It's fast, easy, and would help us a ton. Thank you for your continued support, TGWI Insiders. That's it for this episode of Tech Guys Who Invest. This is Adam. This is Kevin. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast for the latest episode updates and to receive additional investor insights to help you invest wisely and safely. You can join the TGWI Insiders community at tgwipodcast.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, we would love to connect with you. The best way to reach us is by sending us an email at techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody.